Hello there friends, Taylor here. I hope that you're having a lovely day. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of March and it was a total of four. Well technically I read three books in DNF1. I was about like halfway a little bit more halfway through the book and then I just couldn't finish it. So three out of four books I read in the month of March. The first one being Long May She Reign by Ran and Thomas and I really really liked this book and enjoyed it. I gave it three out of five stars. Definitely not like a new favorite and I'm not like obsessed about it but I had such a fun time reading it and I actually finished it pretty quickly, a lot faster than I thought I was going to because it was just such an easy and fun read. So our main character Freya is 23rd in line for the throne and she isn't really your typical court girl. She doesn't like any of the activities or participating in anything that deals with court. She would much rather be in her science lab doing experiments and a ton of other fun things to her. But then an extravagant banquet turns deadly and Freya finds herself on the throne. The king and everybody that was in line before Freya ends up dead, which puts herself on the throne and she never in a million years would have expected herself as being queen. Freya has a lot on her plate. Not only does she have to be learning how to be queen, she can't trust anyone because she doesn't know who did it and anyone could have taken out the throne and not liked the leadership. So she has to strategically know who she can and can't trust. But also Freya wants to find out who was behind all of it or who killed everybody because there was so many deaths at the banquet that it was very tragic to everybody and herself included. She just really wants to find out who did it be better than the king before her. There is twists and turns, some things that you may or may not see coming, and I liked and enjoyed the process of Freya and the people that she has around her figuring out who did it, and also Freya, her transition. Someone that's not just um, a science lab lover, but transitioning into this beautiful queen who has all the best qualities to become one. I really wish that it was like maybe a duology or a series so that way I could fall in love with it even more. I think that I would have liked a lot, just a lot more out of this book and more time to fall in love with the characters and just more. <laughs> so I liked it, glad that I picked it up, wish there was more and it was definitely a fun time. Next up was the book that I DNF'd and which was super surprising to me. It was The Crown's Fate by Evelyn Skye and I got to page 204 so I was about halfway through chapter 40 and I was really surprised that I DNF'd this because I read the first book being The Crown's Game and I really enjoyed that. I think I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. The concept about it is just really interesting. And I thought that I was going to love The Crown's Fate because I loved the first book, I loved the characters, I loved the plot, I loved everything about it. I found myself in this book not interested in anything that was going on, which was surprising to me. I think the reason why, I can't say much about this book because it is the second book to the first one, but I think part of the reason why I love The Crown's Game so much was because of the whole idea of these two awesome imperial enchanters that are magically gifted battling between each other and figuring out who is going to come the winner or the victor out of it and I loved the crowns game so much and everything that was going on magically during the game that when I picked up this book I just fell flat. I think everything that I loved was in the first book and stuff that I didn't like was in this one, the second one. I'm super upset because I had such high hopes for this one. I just found myself just kind of lackluster or like bored of it and I really did try to push myself through the book but my new year's thing is that I don't want to try and push myself to love a book if I'm not enjoying it because I feel like that puts me in so much more of a reading slump is forcing myself to read books that I don't like just because I want to finish them 
and maybe I have a mindset of wanting to finish a book because maybe the next half I would have loved it but I'm at a point where I'm only trying to read books that I truly love and enjoy and if it's still if I'm like halfway through or three quarters through and I'm still not loving it I don't want to force myself to finish it so I'll just read spoilers on what happens at the end and it gets me through it and that's what I did for this one I kind of read the spoilers for the end and I'm really glad that I didn't finish it so obviously a one star for me I still really love the first book I just didn't like the second one the next book I just picked up on a whim and it's been hidden on my shelf for a while since I bought the book and I almost forgot that I had it I don't know what drew me to wanting to pick up this book but I'm so glad I did because it is my first five-star read in what feels like forever and it almost like jump-started my love for reading again and I've been in such a rut and a slump that this book just gave me so much encouragement and happiness. That being The Secret History of Us by Jesse Kirby. Like I said, gave it five out of five stars. It's a pretty short book too. I went through this really quickly. I listened to the audiobook and physically read it at the same time. Our main character, Olivia, was in a really tragic accident. It was almost a near drowning. She ended up being saved and she was in a coma for a couple days and in the hospital. When she wakes up, she realizes that not only does she not remember the accident, she doesn't remember the past four years of her life. So the last part of her life that she remembers is the summer basically preparing to go into her freshman year of high school. Doesn't remember that she has a boyfriend, doesn't remember that she lost one of her best friends, doesn't remember that she's vegan, and a lot of other stuff in her life. Just no memory. She changed a lot in those four years and she can't remember a single thing. So this book is basically Olivia trying to remember and figure out who she was. But the most important thing I found in this book that I took out of it is that she was basically finding herself throughout this journey. I found this book truly emotional and passionate that Olivia is trying to really find out herself and who she truly is. And what was beautiful was her giving up trying to become who she was the past four years and what everybody tells her she is. People can truly change a lot, whether it be days, weeks, months, years. You can, in a sense, become a totally different person. That is what Olivia is struggling with, is that everybody's telling her who she was during those four years. But Olivia woke up and she was still the same person who she felt she was four years ago. And she loved that person. So this journey throughout the book is Olivia trying to find herself in her own way and not trying to have everybody's views about her, of who she became during her high school years, and her just focusing on herself because you know yourself the best. You can have all these people telling you who you are and their opinions about it, but the only person that truly knows yourself is yourself. I really loved getting to immerse myself in this book and also be on the journey with Olivia herself figuring out who she is. Something that I liked about this book that I don't know if other people would like but I sure did was that we didn't have a backstory on Olivia in her four years of high school. So we also were clueless. It was like we woke up with Olivia not knowing anything for the past four years and I liked that because I feel like if I knew her decisions or her choices when she was in high school, that maybe that would have affected how I viewed how she handled things or in a sense. But the fact that her frustrations on not knowing anything and trying to figure it out, I felt with her. And I don't know if I necessarily would have felt those same feelings if I knew her prior history or anything. So I like that we were kept in the dark about her life and we also figured out along the whole entire book things about her that she didn't know. I like that fact. So being kept in the dark and finding out the things the same exact time as Olivia was finding them out and how she handled them and moved forward with herself, I just really loved. So I have so many amazing things to say about this book there's not one thing I really didn't enjoy and like I said it's a pretty short book to get through 
I recommend this book. I think it was amazing and I can't get enough of it. This is my first Jesse Kirby book too and I really want to pick up more books by the author because I loved the writing and the story and how it was told so much. I am just obsessed with this book and love it so much. And the last book that I read in the month of March was The Arrangement by Robin Harding. Well, let me tell you, this book, ooh, I kind of wished this was another thing that I DNF'd it, but I didn't. I read the whole thing. The only thing that I was surprised and enjoyed about this book was the ending because I didn't really see it coming, what happened. <laughs> Everything else in the book I didn't like or care for. I didn't like the main characters, didn't like anything about it. The only thing that was interesting was the ending. So unfortunately I read this whole thing and didn't like it at all. I gave it one out of five stars. Not for me. In my review that I posted I was just like no thank you. I had no problem with what the book was about because I obviously knew it going into it. It's about, it's about the world of like sugar daddies, sugar babies, and the ins and outs of what it's like to be in that world. Our main character, Natalie, is a art student in the school in New York City. Obviously having a really hard time. She moved there from across the country. She doesn't have a lot of money. She is with, in her opinion, some terrible roommates. So many things go wrong in her life. Struggling in New York City. She ends up turning to this person that was in one of her classes as a friend and she kind of introduces Natalie into the world of sugar daddies and kind of explains to her the ropes of what it's like and all these other nitty gritty details about what it's like to be a sugar baby. So Natalie goes on um, a date with one of the sugar daddies named Gabe and he turns out to be someone that she didn't expect. She also went on a couple other dates, but they ended up going very badly, which isn't surprising. Um, but she thinks of Gabe as someone that's different, not your typical sugar daddy. She falls in love with him and things go down from there. Gabe became a sugar daddy because he wanted to just pay these women to do whatever he wanted, basically, and not have any string attachments which was all fine and worked really well for him for the past girls that he had as sugar babies until natalie came along and she became too attached which is not great for someone who is married and has a kid so things go down from there and i didn't like natalie i did not like gabe didn't care about their sugar daddy sugar baby relationship I thought that they both were crappy people so that's probably why I didn't enjoy anything about the book because I didn't care about them as characters. Uh, the girl that Natalie introduced to the sugar daddy sugar baby world I would have much rather had her as the main character and I think maybe I would have liked the book more. I did not like Natalie, also did not like Gabe. I wish the book was written in the friends point of view. But yeah you get both sides, you get Natalie's side and you get Gabe's side didn't like either of them, didn't care. But yeah, that's all really I have to say about the arrangement. So kind of a weird reading month where I had a five star book, I had a DNF, I had a one star that I absolutely did not like, and then I had one that I just purely enjoyed. So it was kind of all over the border <laughs> for me. But that is it for my March reading wrap up. Let me know some of your favorite books in the month of March. If you had any, any five star reads, let me know what some of yours were down below in the comments. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I hope that you have a magical, wonderful day and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.